to move yourself down to the earth, we're going to get started for today's Hatha practice. Um, as I said in our introduction, having a block would be handy today or um, even the pillow off of the couch. Uh, we're going to focus on some front body stretching, so lots of lengthening up the front side of your body, lots of lengthening down the sides of your spine, hopefully just getting into all the little um, nooks and crannies that need a little extra attention. So just take your time. Hopefully I can see a couple of you up adjusting things. So if you need to adjust something, um, whether it be the volume of your music or the space in which you are practicing, go ahead and do so. I'm going to do a quick little adjustment as well. So when you guys hit the floor here, start to do a little check-in. I always invite you to check in with the body not only physically when we first start our practice, but giving yourself a little time to check in mentally as well. To see what's going on. Today we're going to embrace the topic of silence and strength. May the stars carry away your sadness. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears, and above all, may silence make you strong. Chief Dan George. Often our first instinct when we're feeling sad is to fill up the empty space around us with people, noise, and activity. Get out and see other people, our friends tell us. Keep busy. But it can be very healing to allow ourselves to feel sadness fully in silence and alone, particularly if we look for our solace in nature. Being in the natural world reminds us that everything, including sadness, eventually passes. When I am sad, I will sit quietly and experience my feelings. By letting myself be sad for a while, I prepare myself to move beyond sadness. As you rest here on your back, whatever emotions you're experiencing, it doesn't have to be sadness. Just sit quietly and experience those feelings. As you allow your physical body to experience the feelings that you're having, you will be able to prepare to move beyond those. You can use the slow, steady feeling of your breath to invite in a sense of security, a sense of safety, or just a sense of space. Space to be where we are, feel what we feel, and know that we don't always have to have the answers. If you rest on your back, you might slowly start to rotate your nose, kind of shifting your head as if you were painting on the ceiling with the tip of the nose. If the hands have been laying on the floor, maybe they even move to the belly and rest on your belly. As you again, just paint slowly side to side with the tips of your nose. Taking those hands from the belly, allowing them to reach up overhead, maybe palms even face towards the ceiling as you make your body nice and long. When the next exhale comes around, let those hands slowly glide through space and come back to rest on the belly. Inhale, let the belly grow big. Let the hands come away. Hands can reach up towards the ceiling or up and above the head. Exhale, take your time. Let the hands slowly start to move back towards your belly. Feeling the belly button move its way down towards the earth. So the inhale lets the body get big and full as the belly rises towards the ceiling. As the exhale comes, you'll start to bring your hands back down a little closer, letting the body feel safer as you rest here on the mat. One more round at your own pace, using that inhale to add length and space in the front side body. Exhale, breath, hands coming back and letting them find the belly. 
take your time to bend your knees, hands come off the belly and let them rest on either side of the body, near the hips. Heels are gonna walk a little closer to your glutes and when you feel ready, the inhale breath, you're just gonna lift your hips up off the ground, maybe just two or so inches, maybe a little bit higher, but not a big bridge just yet. And then we'll exhale and slowly let those hips fall back down to the earth. Give ourselves two more of those. So you're just taking a gentle lift, kind of around, allowing a little bit of more space in the low back. Some strength to turn on in the legs and then you just let everything kind of float back down to the ground. Using a lift. And a lower. Inhale, breath. Next time, brings the right knee into chest. Let this left leg go long down the mat. Point and flex the toes. Roll around the ankles here a little bit. Maybe even switching the grip to the back of the leg, elevating that foot up towards the ceiling. You can slide hands up this long leg. Maybe even lift the left foot up off the ground slightly, taking a spider shape. Spider pose. Softening that right knee, bring it back down into the chest and then invite it over and across the body towards that left side. Right arm might even reach out to the side, taking a little spinal twist. Inhale, breath will start to bring this knee back to center and then switch out sides, left knee coming into chest just as you did before. Right leg can be long or can serve like a little kickstand here. Straightening this leg up towards the sky. You can stay here in a gentle hamstring stretch. Or turn this into more of a spider shape, spider pose. Try to encourage a little silence in the body. Stop trying to assign an emotion to the feelings that you're feeling in the body. Let things a little quieter. Bring that knee back down to chest. Invite it over for a spinal twist to the other side. And then just as you did before, maybe even extend that arm out in a T shape. Just a gentle spinal twist. Quieting the mind with each inhale and exhale. Knees start to move back center. Hug them both into the body. Put your hands on the tops of the kneecaps. Maybe even circle these in a small circle to the right or a small circle to the left. Hands move to the backs of the legs. Straighten both feet. Put them both up towards the ceiling. Even if you got big bends in your knees, it's okay. You might feel a little silly. That's all right. We're just trying to get some blood moving away from our feet back to our heart. All right, as you feel ready, bring the knees in nice and close. Option to rock and roll on the spine until you come to a seat. Or you can roll yourself to the right and just use the earth. When you get to that seat, come to a tall spine. I'm just turning so I can see you a little better. But you can stay facing whatever direction you are. Hands can move towards the tops of the knees. And I want you to just give yourself an inhale breath, slide the hands back towards the hips, bring your chest through the middle and take a slight lift of your chin. Exhale breath, let your hands slide forward to the front of the knees and bring a little rounding of the chin to the chest. So just a few more times like that, that opening of the chest and the heart, chin lift. Exhale breath, round the back, round the spine. Let's take two more. So just some flexion breaths, allowing for lots of opening in the spine. When you finish that, just bring the hands out and away. Let them touch on either sides of the mat. As you inhale, bring your hands up high above your head. Let them connect. Kind of a high prayer. And then I want you to bend at the elbows and create kind of an O shape with your arms. Inhale, straighten hands, let them go to prayer. Exhale, bend your elbows, take that O shape. One more time.
Once you've completed that O shape, I want you to just shift a little bit to the right and then come back together. My fingers are kind of laced, if that feels good to you. Just see what's happening in your upper back and shoulders, soften with those elbows. We're just kind of leaning right and left. This time when your hands come back to center, we're gonna let this O shape move forward. And then we're just gonna kind of swing it over here to the left and then swing it over here to the right. You just should be feeling lots of opening through the side wall. A little bit of twisting perhaps as the arm shifts. And then you're gonna take it back up overhead. Keep your right hand up tall. Let your left arm come over. Take it to a side body stretch. Reach over. Beautiful. Bring the other arm up back to that O shape. And then we'll reach over again. So you're just going to rotate back and forth through this O shape above the head and getting a little bit of side body lengthening as you move back and forth. And just something real quick. I lost my music. Not sure what happened there. All right, once you've finished that on both sides there, just go ahead and let the hands come down. Find either sides of you. You can put that pillow that you got yourself underneath the tip of the tail if you need it. Take the right ear to the right shoulder. And then stand it back up. Take the left ear to the left shoulder. And then stand it back up. And then just let the chin drop to the chest. Sweep it right. Sweep it left. All right, once the neck's feeling okay, come back to that tall spine and let's move on to hands and knees. Take your time to find a tabletop pose. So with our tabletop today, we've got wrists under shoulders, knees are under the hips. Take your time to get comfortable, um, not only physically on your mat, but in your clothing or anything that's gonna serve as a distraction, you might kind of kick that out of the way. Put your wrists underneath those shoulders and then drop the belly down towards the earth on your inhale breath, chin lift, tail lift. Exhale breath, nice big round back, round spine, and then just continue to move from one shape to the next. Two more. Last one. Next time you hit this big round cat spine, go ahead and sit your hips back onto your heels. Walk your hands as far forward as you feel comfortable. Let those hips sit back and rest. Elbows can be up off the earth with a little lift, maybe even fingertips on the ground, palms up off the earth, or you can let everything settle, including your forehead, down into the mat. Next time your inhale comes, go ahead and bring the chest forward. Let it stack on top of the, your wrist. So you should be in kind of a half plank, more of an extension extension of the spine instead of that tabletop. As you exhale, give yourself a tricep push up and then come back up nice and strong. Give yourself about two more of those, paying attention to the elbows, pushing through the heels of the feet. This next time as the elbows bend, go ahead and bring the belly all the way to the earth. Tuck your hands right near your armpits. One cobra lift, pushing through the pelvis, tops of feet are flat. Exhale, down. Take a big step with the hands. Let them be even with the breastbone. We're going to push weight into the hands. Open the front side body, upward facing dog. From here, take your right toes, curl them under. Take your left toes, curl them under. Pull through the belly button. Lift the hips up to the ceiling. Make sure you protected your back as you lifted to that big down dog. Walk this out. Bend the knees, push the hips back towards the wall behind you, looking for as much extension for the spine as you can get. Knees drop back down to earth, half plank again, three tricep push-ups just as you did before, exhaling on your way down.
Now the next time the belly moves towards the earth, let it settle there. One cobra, hands at armpits, just a small lift. Exhale it back down. Walk those hands, one big hand step, push up for a full upward facing dog. This time maybe pushing through the tops of the feet. See if the thighs can come up off the ground. Engage the core, pull through with the chest up towards the ceiling. Right toes might turn over as you lift hips and then place your left toes onto the ground. Beautiful transition. Now that can be kind of tricky. So if you're feeling labored, you're feeling like that hurts, you're feeling like that you don't have the strength or the tank full enough today to do that, you can always put your knees on the ground and make a more peaceful transition. When you feel ready, small steps with the feet, start walking forward towards your hands. Take your first forward fold of this practice. Head is heavy. Let it droop to the earth. Inhale, look for strength in the legs as you half lift, pausing with a flat spaz. Flat spine, flat back. Either of those words would have worked. Inhale, plant the feet, reach the hands up nice and tall. Exhale, bring this to the heart. Standing in that mountain pose, Tadasana number 11 with the feet. Find your breath. Two more, just nice, strong, fluid breath. Maybe some of the biggest breaths you've taken all day. Feel free to even sigh, exhale that breath out. Next time the inhale comes, reach these hands back up to the ceiling. I'm gonna turn just so you can see me. Interlace the fingers above the head, keep those pointers out. Start to lean to the right. Back to center, take your time, let's lean to the left. Back to center. As you exhale, let your hands float and fall. Knees bend, sweep them to the right. Inhale, bring those hands up. As you exhale, sweep them to the left. This is a wood chopper with a little bit of a twist. So this is all about the exhale. Let that breath really explode out. Get rid of anything you don't need here. You might feel a little silly. That's all right. Let the breath go. You've been holding on to too much, I can tell. Last one. Come back up strong to that mountain pose. Lace the fingers, head to the right. Back to center. Now watch your pelvis. Make sure you're not sticking your tush out behind you as you lean from side to side. Back to center. This time take a bend in the knees. Sit yourself in an imaginary chair. Take that chair pose. Hold the chair, two more breaths. Long extension through arms, nice deep bend in the knees. Exhale, fold. Halfway up, long spine. Exhale, fold, right foot steps back. Drop this right knee down. You can look for a pillow if you wanna throw it underneath that knee or a blanket. Take yourself from this kneeling lunge here to hands lifted up to the ceiling. As you exhale, let the hands come down near the hips. They can stay right here. They can kind of point behind you. Or some of you might feel comfortable lacing the hands behind the back. Another option is hand moves elbow to elbow. If you can see that on the screen, that's an option. One more good breath. If the hands have been laced, let them come apart. Just let your hands start to reach behind you. Inhale, bring the hands up. Exhale, let these hands flow all the way to the ground. Back toes curl under, knee lifts up off the earth. Nice low lunge. Watch this front knee. See if you can get to a place where this feels very 90 degree with the earth. If you can't quite get into that shape, it's okay. Option to drop the back knee to the earth, or you can just take yourself from where you are, step this foot back, put yourself back into a downward facing dog, walk it out. Move the weight between your right foot and your left foot.
When you feel ready, left knee is going to drop to the earth, right foot's going to step all the way through, putting yourself in a kneeling lunge on the other side. Moving a blanket or a pillow underneath that knee if you need it. Hands will start to lift just as you did before. Get comfortable in this space first. Then start sending these hands back towards your hips. You can stay right here, hands reaching back behind, or you can choose to lace or take hand to elbow on either side. All right, one more breath there. Break those hands apart if they've been laced. Start to bring the hands up tall. And then move through a cartwheeling motion, hands down to earth. Curl the back toes under just as you did before. Lift the knee from the ground and play with the angle of this front knee. See what kind of opening you can get through the legs. Hands can always be on blocks if you have those accessible in your practice today. When you feel ready, front foot can take its time to move to the back of the mat. And we just walk this out. All right, small steps of the feet or large leap. Bring your feet towards your hands, forward fold, half lifting when you feel ready, long spine, exhale back to the earth. Plant the feet into the ground, big inhale, reach for the sky, and then sit back into that chair pose. Thinking about your chair, look down. Can you still see your toes? Your knees are not out too far in front of the toes. You've got good equal weight positioning in your feet. Lots of extension out through the arms, control of the low back so we don't have any kind of ache happening in our sway back. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Back to the floor. Right foot steps back, spin that right heel. Let's look for warrior one. With warrior one, our right foot's got a slight out turn, but my foot's not turned completely to the side. Kind of a 45. My hips are square to the front. My arms are lifted. Stay in your warrior one shape, really allowing that back hip flexor to have some room to open. And then just as you did before, shoot those hands back, maybe even lace. Unwinding those hands from here. Inhale, breath brings them back up to the sky. Exhale, breath, take the hands down to earth. Spin on these back toes for that same low lunge and then drop your back knee. Inhale to bring hands up. Now the leg that you have forward, your left leg, that arm's going to fall to the side as your right hand reaches up and over, reaching over here to this left wall. Inhale, bring the arms back up to center. Exhale, fold them down to earth. Curl toes under. Front foot steps back. Big downward facing dog again. Knowing that child's pose is here if you need it today. And it was a warm day, so depending on what you've done today, you might need a few more resting poses in between things, and that's okay. When the body feels ready, we're going to let the feet move back forward again, half lifting with a long spine, folding to earth. Inhale, plant the feet, reach the hands tall, and then take your seat in the chair again. Exhaling that chair, hands fall towards the feet. Half left, back to the earth. Step the left foot back this time. Left heel turns just enough to find space touching the ground. Bend this front knee. Bring your chest up. Silencing that mind here. Just let your breath be your only task right now. 
Try to quiet any other outside noise you hear, things going on outside the windows of your house, your apartment. See if you can be here with your breath, sending those hands backwards. They might choose to lace again as we did before, really letting those shoulders fall down and away from your ears, letting your heart be open, open to more space, more possibilities, more room for that breath to fill us up. Hands coming apart when you feel ready. Heart pulling them up and then back down. Toes are going to turn so that we're in that same low lunge. Knee drops to the earth. Toenails tight to the ground. Hands come up. Since we have a right knee forward, right hand is going to fall down to our side this time as the left hand reaches up and over the top. You could certainly always put a block near the hand that's on the earth to help stabilize you a little more. Putting your hand on that block might help you get a little bit deeper. This is all side body. You should feel it really as so as the group of muscles down here in the groin area that wraps all the way to the low back. All these intercostal muscles up the side body all getting a lot of attention here. Perfect. Hands coming back up, cartwheeling down. This time let's see if we can put that tricep push up back in. Foot steps back. You can put yourself in knees or you can be in full plank this time. You can take three tricep push-ups if you feel like you got a lot in the tank today. Or give yourself one. Next time you're ready to go to the ground, let your belly touch. Give yourself a cobra as a heart opener. And walk those hands back. Play with another upward facing dog. Maybe the thighs lift up off the earth. You might be feeling stronger now than you did in the opening. The wrists are right underneath those shoulders. Toes might start to turn under as you lift your hips to your downward dog. And then we're just going to drop to our knees here. Set your hips back onto your heels. Let your elbows drop, your forehead drop. Give yourself the opportunity to kind of round a little bit through your upper back. Hands might even feel nice walking themselves back towards the feet. Maybe they even grab towards your heels as your head goes down to the earth. You might even choose to turn this to rabbit, curling the toes under, hands grabbing towards the outer edges of the feet, rolling up onto the crown of the head. We'll take our time. Coming back down, hips on heels when you feel ready. Especially those of you who played in that rabbit pose, give yourself a breath or two to stabilize. And then we'll start to come back up. Hands and knees. And then bring yourself to high knees. When you get to high knees, take a big inhale breath, hands reach up. Exhale, take the O shape you found before, lean to the right. Back to center, O shape, lean to the left. Back to center. And then send both hands up nice and tall. Bend at the elbows, slide the hands down towards your hips until they can curl around and place themselves hand and hand at your low back. Now, as we play with a very modified um, camel today, I want you to be thinking about lifting from the front of your t-shirt, front of the heart here, rather than using these hands to really push the pelvis forward and the belly out, you're trying to lift up through the heart and then lift your chin towards the ceiling. Option to drop the hands from the low back. Let the hands start to reach in the direction of your heels. If you want to kind of lift up onto the toes, you certainly can and go for a fuller version of camel today. But don't feel pressured to move into something that isn't really sitting with you today. 
All right, coming out of whatever version you've been in, I think it's nice to take kind of a hero sit for a moment after. If you're feeling at all lightheaded, make sure you find your breath. If it feels good to bring hands to earth and maybe get a cat spine, or maybe a child's pose, walking the hands out. Take three more breaths. Lots of strength shown today, quieting the mind, staying present in each of these poses. All right, as you feel ready, we're going to move ourselves back up to feet. I'm going to take myself from table to down dog and then just start walking my hands back to the mat instead of the other way around. Get to that forward fold, feet placed into the earth, big inhale, hands reach up, look up. Exhale, let these hands gravitate back down to find your heart. And then we're gonna put weight into the right foot. Standing on that right foot, see if you can bring hands down by hip and lift the left knee, maybe up towards the 90 degrees. If you're feeling strong, maybe the hands even move to the back of this thigh and you start to elevate out through that heel. Now watch what your low back wants to do. It's gonna wanna hunt you over. Let's see if we can keep the spine nice and tall. One more breath. Feel free to reach for a piece of furniture if you need to or laugh this off if your balance is kinda crazy today. And then just bring that foot back down, good work. Separate the feet. I'm gonna go a little wider than my mat just because I can, because I have the space. I'm gonna rock a little bit side to side just because it feels good. If that feels good to your inner thighs or your hips, feel free to visit something, adds a little fluid movement. And we'll go back to the mat, left foot finding itself into the ground as the right knee lifts. Staying in that shape. Another round of breath, a couple rounds of breath. Maybe the hands even come, support this. You can always take like a big toe pose if that's part of your practice. <laughs> or if you haven't done those in a while, <laughs> you might be a little wobblier than usual. That's okay too. Give yourself just a couple breaths. Realizing the space you're in today might be different than usual or than where your practice was when you were regularly practicing with us in the studio. These little breaks of have some wear on our bodies. We know that. But you're doing awesome. Bring that foot down to earth and then just take your time. Come out of it. I think what I'm going to do next, rather than just separating wide across the sides of my mat, I think I'm going to move to the middle of my mat and separate wide on my actual mat. A little bit of movement between the legs might feel really nice, turning the toes to match your heels. You might even just decide maybe you want more of just like a static big forward fold. That might feel really good here too, just a wide-legged fold with the head kind of hanging down in between the legs. Maybe your hands are on the floor or that block or pillow that I suggested you had near. That might feel good to you. And if forward fold big like this just aren't your thing or they don't feel good in your legs, you can certainly be doing something different. Maybe just a legs together forward fold. Or a squat. Anything that's going to make you feel a little more present in your own body. All right, when you feel ready, I want you to try to work towards one more final mountain pose. So that might mean feet kind of moving closer and closer and closer and closer. And then lifting yourself back up to a strong mountain pose. Or maybe you half lift and then you come up. Whatever it takes to just get your body back underneath. When you get to this mountain pose, 
bring the hands in strong and secure to the heart and then lift them up above the head just as you've done so many times glacing maybe keeping the pointers out and just heading right and left watching the pelvis again just as we did before kind of swaying here side to side One more time, each direction. And then just give yourself a nice big forward fold. Head hangs heavy, shake it, yes. And no, knees are gonna bend just into a classic squat, perhaps knees together. Maybe a little rounding through the upper back as the forehead comes down to the tops of the knees. And then we're gonna move ourselves down to our knees. So you kind of rock forward on your toes till your knees hit the mat. And if you're face to the side like I am, you might wanna turn so that you have more space long ways on your mat. We're gonna do one or two things here on our bellies. If you're wanting more strength again, you can take those same tricep push-ups or you can just lower all the way down here into the belly. Today's shape, we're going to create a sphinx pose, and it is just like it sounds. You're gonna walk these elbows slightly out in front of you, looking for good 90 degree angles. Hopefully you can see that on the screen here. Elbows underneath of my shoulders, fingers spread out nice and wide, reaching forward. And then I'm just gonna take a little lift of the chin, pull of the heart through the center, and then an exhale breath, Rounds my back a little bit at the top, chin comes down to the chest. My pelvis is lifting ever so slightly up off the mat, but I'm keeping my toes down on the earth. You'll feel a little bit of engagement through the core. That's normal and helpful in strengthening those low back muscles and those core muscles. Of course, if you wanna feel a little bit more, you can always position yourself so that when your chin comes down to chest, your hips lift as well. And then you lower like a planked board all the way back into settle in the earth. Just take your time. Give yourself one more. Next time you're back to your classic sphinx. Walk your arms out a little bit further in front. Seal pose. Seal looks like I'm doing the letter Y. And then I just kind of walk the hands a little bit closer like you were doing in that sphinx and push into the ground. My pelvis is really glued into the earth and if this is bothersome because you're on a hard floor, you can always reach for a blanket or a pillow to put underneath. Your neck should be relaxed, let your shoulders Settle back into the sockets where they belong. Toenails engaged in the earth. And then settle all of this. Let the elbows bend. Bring the hands, maybe make a pillow underneath the forehead. Rest on your belly in silence. It might feel good to bend your knees. Maybe let your feet even sway a little bit right and left. And then I want you to just do a quick look around you. See if you can find your pillow or your block that I suggested that you have. Hopefully it's within reach. And then ordinarily when we're in a yoga class, we would kind of all be facing the same way when we start to finish. Today, it doesn't really matter. I just want you to just take your time and roll yourself onto your back. So again, you wanna have that block or your pillow within reach. Grab it with your hand. Put yourself on your back just like we started. Get your shoulder blades out from underneath of you. It might even feel nice to let them reach out in kind of a T. I sometimes like to push through the bottoms of my feet, lift my low back up, and just kind of let my lower vertebrae settle themselves into the mat. And then I want you to reach for that block or that pillow. 
On your next natural inhale, lift the hips up off the ground and slide the block or the pillow underneath of you. Now, before we go into what feels very natural to want to lift the feet to the sky, I want you to see if you can extend your right leg nice and long and then your left leg. So this pillow or this block that's underneath you doesn't have to be lifted very high for you to feel just a very subtle stretch across the front side body. Of course, if you're not feeling enough, you can certainly tilt for a bigger lift underneath the back or add a second pillow if you need it. But it shouldn't feel like anything real crazy. It should be pretty subtle. For most of us, just adding the arms will take it up enough to really feel like a nice full body stretch across the front side. Kind of similar to that mountain pose we played with so many times with our arms extended up overhead, leaning right and left. This is a similar shape you can get here on the floor. We opened our heart with some camel shapes. We opened our heart with sphinx, feel, uh, feel. a little tongue tied today. Upward facing dog, there was lots of work on that front side wall. Just take your time as you feel ready to bring the knees in a little closer. Maybe the hands come back to the hip. You can rest here in a supported bridge, keeping that pillow underneath your back. It might feel nice to extend one or both feet up to the sky since you've already got that lift underneath of you. If you want to do that, feel free. But no, just because you have something underneath of you doesn't mean your legs have to be completely straight. If your hamstrings don't really like that and you want to bring your hands up and hold on to the backs of your thighs, that's okay. If you're able to make a nice good L shape, it might feel nice as well. Knowing your head can always sway here a little bit, you can kind of give yourself a massage in the back of the skull. It might feel good to push up off the block and let the feet come up over the head, moving into plow pose. Taking your time. Embracing whatever poses feel best to the back, to the shoulders, to the neck. Move that blood back down to your heart. Connecting once more to that same natural inhale and exhale that you found in our opening moments, those moments of stillness, silence where you create space to deal with the emotions, to feel the emotions that happen in the body. They're often hiding. And sometimes when we get to Savasana, they're big. I've watched some students before get up from Savasana with tears on the face, they're just wet in the eyes and they're not even really sure why. But the physical movement, the space that you were provided in time just to breathe here, be who you are, gives us the freedom, the security, the safety that we need to let those emotions be. If you've had a block or a pillow underneath of you, maybe it's time to remove it. Bringing the feet back to the earth slowly. Lifting the hips, pulling it out from underneath of us. And then just listen. Do the knees want to come to the chest? Maybe hugging in tight. You're taking kind of a happy baby shape with the feet towards the ceiling, hands moving towards the outer edges of those feet. Maybe you're in a crisscross shape, knees bent, rocking back and forth on the small of the back. Maybe even taking reclined bound angle where the soles find one another and the knees fall out to the side, right hand resting on the heart, left hand across the belly. 
Just listen to your own physical body. See what closing postures are still necessary in order to, for you to find that relaxation, that final pose, the savasana. So you have a few more moments just to move through anything that feels like it might be necessary. Take your time. If the pace of your music you have playing at home is not matching the pace of this practice, you might take a moment to turn it down, pause the music. And just try to be within the space that you're in. Listening for small sounds around you, observing them not necessarily trying to figure out what they go to, what they're about. Before you find that final savasana, I'm going to suggest just a spinal twist if you haven't found that just yet. Maybe the right knee moving in towards your chest, the left leg going long or bent. And then we'll pull that right knee just as we did in our opening sequence over and across the body, providing for a twist shape. Of course, if you've already done this shape and you'd like to do something else here in your closing moment, you of course can. Our spine needs to be twisted just a little bit more today. We did a lot of side body and a lot of front body. So just giving that area of the spine final attention. Once this side feels like it's had a nice twist, take your time to bring it back through center, hugging it in tight. And then we'll send it long, switching sides. Knee coming in towards the chest and then inviting it over and across. And then we'll hold for a minute or two here, just as you did on the other side. Knowing that if you turn your gaze in the complete opposite direction of the knee, it'll serve as a bigger shape if the head stays focused on the ceiling or turned in the direction of the bent knee. It's gonna be a little softer. As the twist on this side starts to feel finalized, complete, just take your time, start bringing it back to middle. Knees might be hugged into the chest for one more big final hug. You might decide you're ready to go ahead and let the legs go long, maybe planting the heels in place, but letting those toes roll towards the outer edges. Arms might spread as wide as the space in the room you are in, or they might stay a little closer, a little more conservative next to the hips. Your savasana might feel really nice here flat on your back today, or you might decide you want bent knees or even to lay on your right or even your left side. Whatever spaces you choose, of course, are completely up to you as you start to close out today's class. Allowing ourselves to just be present in this space in these closing moments. Knowing that my voice will call you back when our time has come to an end. So close your eyes. More need to focus on the screen. Allow the muscles of the face to gently relax. The tension you've been holding onto in your forehead, let it soften. 
the eyes, within the face, the tongue, away from the roof of the mouth, the jaw, the neck, the shoulders. Let all of that have the space that it needs to settle into the earth. Invite in a sense of peace with a breath in through the nose. Let that move its way all the way down the spine. Continuing to draw in peaceful breaths through the nose. And then they leave the body slowly when you feel ready. We'll stay in this space, this final savasana for just a few more moments, knowing that my voice will call you back when it's time to conclude class. Slowly starting to become aware of your breath. Slowly and gently allow movements to come back into the body. Let them be easy. Maybe you just start by opening and closing your hands or letting your nose sweep back and forth across the ceiling. Maybe even pointing and flexing the toes, rolling the ankles, rolling the wrists. As the movements feel natural, maybe the knees start to bend. Things get a little bigger. You hug the knees into the chest. You start rocking side to side. Maybe ultimately rolling to your right, using that arm like a pillow, resting there in somewhat of a fetal position. And then we'll return back to our seat only when you feel ready. See if you can find a tall spine. Bring the hands into the heart, palm to palm, and close the eyes. We'll use the final moments of today's class to focus on that over, underlying rather, intention we had for today, silence and strength. When my feelings are big, I will sit quietly and experience them. By letting myself feel the things I feel, I prepare myself to move beyond. May the stars carry away your sadness. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, may silence make you strong. Dan George. 
I greatly appreciate you finding this time for yourself. This time to be quiet, this time for to reflect, but also just to move and breathe. May you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you again. Namaste. Thank you.